<clears throat> Hello, back again. Yes, another live stream. Yes, we're doing more Dungeon Master prep, and I am hopefully going to be able to get through this because I can feel myself struggling to keep the uh, the sickness away. Like it's winter here in New Zealand, so this is this tends to happen at this time of the year for me. So I have prepared quite a lot. I'm going to be running a poll. <clears throat> And uh, we are going to be making some monsters today. So for those of you who are hoping to, that I would actually do that, we are going to be doing pretty much all of it. Um, my suggestion to you is make sure you have pen, pencil, um, paper, have it ready. Take some notes if you need to. And also to make sure you have some food, some drink. Make sure you are ready because there's a lot to take on, on board. I have built this <clears throat> based on what I do. And I also had um, some friends, some subscribers look at it, and I, I also actually had AJ Pickett uh, look it over too, and he was very helpful. Uh, so you uh, you are you are hopefully getting a pretty good rundown about how to do this. How's it going, Dino Mancer? <clears throat> Welcome to the stream. Okay, let's get into it. We've got lots to cover, and we also need to make a monster. So that's that's the deal. Is like. I explain stuff, we do some Q&A at the end of my presentation, and then we make a monster together. <clears throat> and I show you how to do it, or how I would go about doing it. And hopefully in the simplest way possible. Okay. <clears throat> I think I have got myself cleared out. Let's do this. Hi, welcome to How to D&D. My name is Fred Weller, and today I want to talk about Dungeons and Dragons. I mean, you could apply this to other role-play games, but in terms of the mathematical side of things... What I'm going to be doing is a Dungeon Master Preparation Tutorial. Um, this is Lesson 3, and this is going to be Building Monsters. So we're going to build the monster from the ground up, the whole thing. Now we might have a few uh, tips and tricks and um, things and prompts to help us along the way, but ultimately the idea is not to reskin. Like, I mean, if all we were going to do was reskin, then you wouldn't need me at all. In fact, would you need anybody? If you were going to reskin, no, you probably wouldn't. So, what is uh, today going to cover? The overview is we're going to do um, monster stat block builders. So, I'm going to talk about some of the different monster stat block builders that are available out there. There is more than one. I'm going to talk about um, inspiration for monster creation. So, how do you go about sort of getting the inspiration for that? Uh, monster building process, the actual process of doing that. A lot of the monster story questions, I know some of you uh, in the poll that I put up said, no, I don't need help with the story side of monsters. But since I feel that monsters are very much a story concept and not just a stat block, we're going to be doing that. And then we're going to be using today, I'm going to use D&D Beyond, the Monster Creator. It's free you don't have to pay for it. If you're building everything from scratch, you just need to have an account. It doesn't cost you a thing. And um, there are other monster builders, as I said, but we're going to use this one for today to build the actual stat block. And then miscellaneous recommendations. And uh, the intention is we will specifically build a monster. What that monster is will be dependent on those of you as, who are part of the, the live chat. That's sort of how it works if you're here you have the most influence over what takes place. So the objectives for today is to explain building a monster, con concepts, stat blocks for Dungeons & Dragons 5e rather than other roleplay games, but the story side could be applied to any roleplay game, demonstrating how to do it, concept and stat block, and uh, yes, we're going to make a homebrew monster. That's, that's the practical side of things. Now, I will hopefully in the future be able to pull you into the live feed, but I unfortunately can't do that now. Right now on D&D Beyond, you will find they have a homebrew monster builder for Dungeons & Dragons 5e. It's available for free. This is the tool we're going to use today. It is the tool I would suggest you try out. And if you don't like it, try some of the other ones that I'll talk about. Okay, so let's get some inspiration for our monsters. Some of the inspiration that I have drawn from is I, I selected the things that I normally do. And then I selected a whole lot of things that other people have uh, mentioned to me in the past. So your inspiration for your monster creation. I'm going to suggest a brainstorm page. This is where you just like do a quick sketch of what your monster is. It doesn't have to be fancy. And then you just write down a whole lot of ideas. And they're going to revolve around the questions that we're going to ask about the monster. Not just about their special abilities and what they can do in, in, a, in a battle or outside of a battle or any special traits they might have, 
but sort of a lot of the other questions that are associated with creating a monster, right? I find that books and movies are a good source of ideas and inspiration if you're looking for something a little bit new. Everything has really essentially been done before, but we can take that, twist it, and go and go somewhere else with it. Also, I would say I spent way too much time on Google search and Pinterest um, art, um, art station and um, deviant art. All those websites have a lot of really cool ideas, um, a lot of very clever and creative artists, and you may be able to just take an image that you like and then build the monster around the image that you have found, okay? And then there's another way, and this goes right back to the very, very early days of Dungeons and Dragons, right back to TSR, and this is combining real world animals to create a new monster. It was quite common, you would often get really silly res um, <clears throat> results, but it's still a very good way of trying to test the waters. You can also take existing fantasy monsters and combine them to make something else. If you're looking to try to put your own stamp on something, right? To make it your own. <clears throat> okay, so that's the inspiration side of things. Now, what's the actual monster building process? Generally, I think the best way to go about this is step by step. Start with creating the monster concept. That's not necessarily what it looks like or its name, but it certainly revolves around the basic concept. That might be as simple as a couple of words, it might be a, a sketch or a drawing, it might be what you're trying to do with it, <clears throat> but your general concept. Then you want to go with describing the monster, its appearance. It doesn't need to be a drawing, you can just write down what you think you want it to look like, and then developing some special abilities for it, something that it does, okay? Uh, I mean, I would have to say that probably one of the more interesting aspects of creating any kind of monster is the fact that you get to um, uh, take that and turn it into something that is going to um, surprise your players. Like, essentially, that's what we're trying to do is, like, how do we surprise our players in some way with the, uh, the monster we have created? And that's why we, we talk about special abilities. The next one is, like, give your monster a name that sort of matches the monster concept. Like, if the name is... Look, look, one of the problems with names is, of course, like, every name has always been made, right? You've, every name is covered, right? So what can you do differently that somebody else hasn't done before? I can't answer that um, particularly well. You will figure out what you think the monster should be called when the name comes. I always find that... Once I have like a list of different names, I can whittle it down to a few select um, options, the one that I think is the best for that monster. Then we're going to make up the story or the history, the ecology, the habitat, and the lore for our monster. Now I have listed off a whole lot of different things. It's all encompassing the same thing. It's, a, it's essentially the story of the monster. I think essentially when you look at something like Dungeons & Dragons specifically, the concept of the story or adventure that players in, um, are going to interact with is a story of these heroes or these characters interacting with a monster. Not necessarily fighting it, but the story of their interaction with that monster. That's almost all of Dungeons & Dragons. You can have variations. I know some people like more political, some people like more mystery. But essentially, at its core, Dungeons & Dragons is about the relationship between the player characters and monsters, and what story is drawn from that, okay? Then we're going to go through the process of building the monster stat block, and doing all the maths, and um, chasing all of, all of the mathematical, well, essentially we're going to try to chase the mathematical unicorn in the stat block creation process. I'm going to give you some shortcuts, of course, because you're going to need them, and I'm going to need them, otherwise I'll go insane. I can assure you I spent many hours doing this and finding myself pulling my hair out and I don't have enough as it is because I simply have tried to do it perfectly and sometimes you've got to understand you don't necessarily need all of the numbers so we're going to go through the process of doing that as well. Okay now I have been talking a lot about uh, monster story and so uh, I have enlisted 
um, the assistance of other people, not just my own brain and my own creative uh, ties to anything. I did enlist the assistance of AJ Pickett and some other friends. Thank you, William. And we have put together sort of a list of the different things we think you need to build out the story for your monster. Okay, so where does the monster normally live? Like it's its normal habitat. It might have a lair, it might have a, a type of terrain that it normally lives in. You're going to establish that. Why is the monster in its current location for this adventure? It might not be in its normal terrain. It might not be in its normal home. Um, so we need to answer the question as to why it's in this different location, if that's the case. Why does the monster, what sort of, what does the monster want? Or what does the monster want from the characters? Now, you can answer to both those questions because what the monster wants um, in general might be slightly different what, from what the monster wants from the player characters, particularly if it's an intelligent monster and it's not just a num num num, I'm going to eat you sort of monster. Um, what makes the monster unique? What makes the monster scary? Okay, if it's meant to be scary. Not all monsters are meant to be scary. What I'm going to say is like, if you're going to try to um, put together something that you makes it unique, sometimes it's a good idea to combine f a few different ideas or abilities into one, and then you'll sort of get the idea of what your monster does. So sometimes if you've got sort of different things going on, pull them together, put them in the same place. So what does it feed on? How does it survive? What is the, the monster's territorial range? Like how far does it move from its normal terrain or um, across its terrain? Like it's got to have a home of some kind unless it's completely nomadic. Um, if it's got a lair, like how far will it range from that lair? That's what we're talking about, territorial range. Um, what does the monster, or how does the monster sense creatures or prey in its environment? If it's hunting like living creatures and it's not like a veggie eater, like how does it actually uh, um, sense that stuff? How does it sense other creatures, but also how does it sense prey if it eats meat? What does the monster ignore? There will be things that the monster doesn't have any interest in and so will ignore, so we, may need to, we might need to put that down as well. Uh, what does the monster, so how does the monster communicate? Like, is it clicks and whistles? Um, is it through smell? Is it through body language? Like, you know, a lot of that is sort of there. How does the monster reproduce? Yes, I know what you're thinking. Like, really? We're going to go as far as, uh, like, its reproduction? Why not? I mean, some it might be as simple as it doesn't reproduce and it was created by a wizard. Like, we can answer a lot of questions in terms of monster reproduction. What crazy wizard made another monster. Oh gosh, really? They've got another albeer. Um, how does it change the environment by living in that specific place? Because often when a monster or a type of monster or a community of monsters is living in a particular environment, it actually changes the way that place sort of operates. And so we might need to answer that question as well. So we've, we've got quite a few different questions with regard to story. You're not necessarily going to be answering every single question but we're going to do our very best to answer as many of them as possible okay i just need a quick break a bit of water so i don't lose my voice okay moving on uh dnd beyond monster creation so my advice to you is it's probably one of the better tools to use out there. Uh, you don't have con total control. Uh, by putting it up onto the website, you kind of do lose creative control of it. So you may decide that you're probably better off to use a third-party builder. Um, but because we're going to be using this today, this is what I'm going to suggest. Uh, sign into DNT Beyond, create a login, okay? If you have an account already with Wizards of the Coast official website, then you'll have a DNT Beyond account already. You can That's what you use, essentially, okay? Uh, select the Collection tab, and then go to Homebrew Monster Option, okay? You're going to collect, you're going to select the Create from Scratch. We are not going to use a pre-existing monster because there's plenty of people already making videos about that and we're not doing that we're actually doing all of the work we're going to consult the dungeon master guide for dungeons and dragons 5e and specifically the page we are looking for is page 274 that provides the quick monster stat block table 
Now I know a lot of people are thinking, why are we gonna be using the quick monster stat block table? Because by using pre-existing monsters from the monster manual and finding one that's as close to what we want is not building from scratch. And two, a lot of the monsters in the monster manual for Dungeons and Dragons 5e aren't necessarily built very strictly on the system that they have put in the Dungeon Master's Guide. Now, <clears throat> we're talking a little bit about CR rating. Now, I've already mentioned that I despise the CR rating and the concept of monster level and the concept of using formulas to try to figure out difficulty because I don't believe it actually is plausible to do so. None of it has ever worked. The three stuff in three... In three um, 3E, 3.5, 4E, and now 5E. And frankly, I, I think the same thing applied with Pathfinder First Ed Edition. Don't tell me that Second Ed Edition has done it better because they, they, it, it, you can't do it. But it's a guide, a very rough guide. Okay? This is more of an art. Like building monsters and stat blocks, I was talking to AJ and I was like, how do we communicate to people the concept of building a monster to a challenge rating to get it right for our party? And he said, I just use my brain. I, I just know based on my group and the stuff that's there how it's going to come out. And I was like, yeah, so that's not something I can communicate to a general audience. And I knew the same thing because I kind of do something very similar. Um, but here we go. So select the challenge rating from that table that you want for the monster. We're, we're, this is just the starting challenge rating. So you're just using it as a guide. It's not necessarily going to mean that's what the challenge rating will be. And you're going to transfer all the details and information from the challenge rating off that table into our monster stat block on D&D &D Beyond. We're going to decide what sort of role the monster is going to have. Is it a solo monster? Okay, in other words, is it, is it going to be a legendary monster with legendary actions? Um, is it the leader? So like, is it going to be um, stand out from the rest of the monsters? Is it a soldier? Does it stand in the front line? Is it an artillery monster? In other words, is it going to be using ranged attacks rather than getting up close? Is it a controller? Does it affect different um, large areas? Like, does it use area effect um, abilities or spells or something like that? Is it a skirmisher? Does it, does it rush into combat? up close and melee and, and uh, make a whole lot of swings or bites or whatever the heck it is and then get back out again. Like, is it that does that move around that way? Like, once we've established those concepts, we, we're making it a lot easier for ourselves. Build the monster's special abilities and attacks. I would suggest using the Dungeon Master Guide for D&D 5e. Uh, it has a table for monster features. It's on page uh, 280 through to 281. Now we can also make up our own special abilities. We don't have to just select one of those that are already there, but this is often the easiest way to get a lot of it done. It has pretty much all you need. Um, I would say some of them are a bit tame and you may want to sort of spice them up because let's get real, the monster manual for 5e is full of very, the pussy, very tame, very pussy. They're very, they're just not that exciting. Like we might need to do a little bit more to them. But the basics is there. We might just have to change some of the numbers and add in a few conditions and stuff like that and make it a little bit more interesting. Select the ability scores for your monster that makes sense. We're not trying to pick um, ability scores that we think are suitable for a really high level monster. We may find that we have a monster that has a very high um, challenge rating, but it's not very intelligent, or it's not very, um, if it's a large monster, it might not be very dexterous, so it might have a very low dexterity. Okay, so those are things that we'll consider. And then we're gonna make all of the mathematical adjustments to our stat block for the monster. Now it's not going to look like a professional product put out by Wizards of the Coast or a third party um, publisher because we're using it for our game, okay? You're gonna to have to spend significantly more time rummaging through the Dungeon Master Guide and using um, builders and so forth to calculate absolutely everything if that's what you're looking for. But we are going to do a lot of the maths, the things that count that you will need for a battle if you have a battle. And then lastly, we're going to check the challenge rating and we, we could use the Dungeon Master Guide, but I would go insane, you will go insane. It's awful to deal with. We're going to use a, um, a, a challenge rating calculator that's on a website. Um, it's the 5e tool CR 
uh, or challenge rating calculator. And so we're going to use that as our final sort of wrap it all up to make sure we've got a, a basic idea of where we're sitting. Now, you could quite frankly just leave the challenge rating off and just like I've always sort of assumed that the best way to figure out if a monster is suitable for your group is to use the trial by error. You start slow and you build it up until you get to a point where you are starting to struggle. And then you decide if you want to um, push it a bit harder than that. It's really up to you after that. It, like I said, it's more of an art. Okay, so we have covered sort of the creation side of things. Then we have the miscellaneous recommendations that I have for you based off my experience. Yes, I have made many monsters. Um, the monster will always feel unfinished. You'll find this to be the case. So don't let your perfectionist side of you overrun and feel like you, you know you never otherwise you'll never stop trying to complete the monster you have to put it down at some point and say that's good enough i've done all i need to okay um, it's easy to get fixated on the stat block when building any kind of aspect for monster creation like this try not to get fixated too much because essentially all of the really important things are generally done for us in the quick monster um uh, step block um, table that we're going to be using today and then um, and now also I want you to avoid judging the value and quality of your monster that you've created because you're <laughs> you aren't likely to be making it to sell like you're probably not making this to sell on the open market so it doesn't really matter what I think or somebody else thinks um, it doesn't frankly matter what your players think it only matters what you think of the monster and if you like the monster, great, okay? And that's all that really matters because ultimately only you know all the maths behind it. And that's, that's the only thing that matters is you know all the maths behind it and everybody else really doesn't and they don't really need to know it. Do you know what I mean? It's, <laughs> so the monster is your own. Okay, so we have covered pretty much all of the different things that I wanted to discuss in terms of uh, monster creation. And I'm hoping that this... Uh, presentation has given you some sort of insight into the sorts of things that you need to do when you're creating your monster from scratch and hopefully it will make it easier for you in terms of links and different locations you can get stuff from I'm going to make that available for patrons on the PDF that I create for them um, so it will have like all the resources there listed with the websites okay and hey till next time keep rolling those 20s and thank you very much for watching. Okay, I'm not gone. Let me switch over to uh, my webcam and I will go through the chat very quickly to make sure that we have covered all the things we need to. Uh, it also gives me an opportunity to open up on my phone uh, the, the chat. No, I don't need this. I do need that. And that will just allow me to keep a track of things while I'm shifting over because we're going to be using a Google Doc, we're going to be using a website, um, all of which will huh, skip that. I don't need that. Thank you very much. And then it is, it should be running. Um, is it live? It is live. Okay. All right. So it's trying to catch up. So let me just go through the, uh, the chat here with uh, the webcam first and then I'll move on. Let's have a look at the poll too. I want to sort of get an idea, I want to gauge like how interested are people. I think you're going to be much more interested once I start saying stuff that you want to hear. In other words, actually building the monster. Oh, um, look, to ensure that this class keeps going, the best way to do that is to support me on Patreon. Like all of the stuff we do here will go to Patreon. Like the presentation, the PDF for that will go to Patreon. You'll get all of that with all of the links and resources, okay? The other thing is like anything that we make, like if when we make a monster for this particular class, that will actually go on to Patreon. I will probably make it listed um, as a, a Word document, not a PDF. It won't necessarily have art, but it will have the stat block included. And, um, and then you can decide what to do with it from there okay uh, essentially I'm giving you control to do whatever you want to do with it that means that probably in the future when we have enough monsters um, I'm going to take that those monsters and I'll get a professional to turn them into a actual product 
which will wind up either on um, drive through RPG or the DMs Guild, depending on which one we think is most suitable. Okay, so just the, the and look, the other way is Super Chat. Um, super Chats and Super Stickers, another way to actually support, to make sure I keep doing this and, uh, and, and what we do here. So, um, do you struggle with building a monster stat block from scratch for Dungeons and Dragons 5e. We've got 50% of only, oh, it's only 10 people have responded. 50% have said yes, no, 20%, okay, so that won't be any good to you. Um, but we're not just doing that today. Sometimes 30%, okay, so we've got a, a good idea. I'm gonna leave that poll going. I'm gonna go through the chat here. I think I've already said hi to Dinomancer. Um, Moriana, how's it going? Good morning. Um, I don't know which time zone you're in, but I know it's, it's about 12.30 here in New Zealand um, in the afternoon. Um, be, be, beware of that uh, when, what was it, fighting monsters, uh, you yourself don't become a monster. Yeah, well, I suppose. <laughs> the abyssal gaze. Uh, a Mesa, how's it going? Hello, great topic. Look, this is not, you're looking forward to this one? It's not the only one. This is just the first of many. We're going to roll back around to this again. You like the format, Soltron um, Tron. Now, I think I recognize the name, Soltron42. I'm just trying to remember. We have talked before. You like the, um, the, the, the format. The format is designed to be like a classroom, and um, we, that's why I used the slides to begin with. You can, you can catch part of it. Well, I'm glad that you were able to at least get some of it. Some good points. Yeah, you do need to put the perfectionist side away, otherwise um, it's going to be a problem. Um, Jeev, how's it going? Uh, yes, it is going to become, you're going to become a regular? Yeah, well, it's go, there's, I have a regular feeds going now, like it looks like it's six days a week now. Um, we're, we're into full blown. The computer is showing up, we just need to install it, and we're still trying to write, find a railing system for the 6K camera which is supposed to fit somewhere. Um, we haven't figured that one out yet, but we're getting there. Uh, thumbs up is always nice too. I do appreciate that sort of thing. Um, I am becoming a little... Uh, that's Robert Moore. How's it going, Robert? How are you doing? Okay. Um, there are some patrons in here, and I'm, for the life of me, I guess the stress of um, a live stream, I've forgotten which ones are the patrons and which are not. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I need to just print out a list and just put it on my wall so I remember. The problem is that the names on Patreon are, don't necessarily match up with YouTube, so it's a bit difficult sometimes. Um, okay, so some of the best DM advice around. Thank you again, Mr. Wheeler. You are welcome. Like, let's do a monster, shall we? So this is this is the deal with in terms of a monster. I decided I have prepared something that I will build. I've already decided on something we can build. But I'm quite happy to ditch that and build a monster for somebody in the live stream. So I was, I was sitting here and I was thinking, okay, so how does this work, Fred? And I was like, I was thinking about a $20 um, super chat and I'll build your monster. But you need to have, good Robert, I'm glad you're okay. But you need to have, if you want me to build the monster from scratch, I need to have a basic concept idea that we can build from, otherwise it's going to be too hard because we've also got to do a stat block and we've got limited time. We've got about an hour and a half to get it done, so that may be well and truly enough. Um, but you also need to ensure that I can get hold of your email address so I can send you the monster once it's built. Like uh, Otherwise, it's going to be very difficult. If you're a patron, you're going to get that information anyway. But if you're not, so if you a super chat for $20 and I will build the monster for you. Um, and so will the the people in the uh, in this in this live chat. Um, otherwise, I'm going to do um, something else that I had in mind uh, because I have a strange sense of humour. I had selected something that appeals to me and may appeal to you, and that's kind of odd, but it will prove. Uh, it will allow us to test all of our tools and figure everything out along the way. So um, I have an, I'm going to give you time to think about it while I shift over to my screens and get uh, ready for the monster creation process. There is my template, which I will now copy and paste because we'll be using this. So we will copy that. 
make a copy of it and drop it down below here and that is that is good uh, pardon me actually I might just take that and copy and paste and then drop it right down below everything so that we don't get in the way of what I'm doing here um, and I know that it's at the end here right this is what we're using here okay and then I'll make sure that we have D&D Beyond up and ready to go I will shift over to my screen so you can see everything that we're doing okay so for those of you who are like oh I can't see anything Fred don't worry you will be able to see everything very very shortly we will do all of that okay all right so we've got D&D Beyond up I do not care about that thank you very much we'll turn that off um, and we'll just wait for the uh, website to be refresh good okay it looks like we are shifting into um, whatever I have decided to create for today uh, BRB I'm gonna make a, um, a lunch coffee I'm in um, I, I'm a uh, what patron now Fred ah yes Dinomancer yes you are that's right yesterday I remember you signed up um, yes I, I saw that um, what's your discord <clears throat> my discord actually I can drop that in right now for those of you who are here it probably would be helpful the discord is not a pay thing um, I am often there the discord is designed for you to talk to me uh, by video or audio you know so either um, voice chat or um, video chat I'm not really using the discord to do tech stuff because I'm usually working I cannot use discord like that so <clears throat> its primary tool is to literally communicate with me uh, using voice chat or um, uh, video chat <clears throat> and as long as you use it in that way we will be all good um, okay so let's just have a look and see where is the invite people <clears throat> I make a copy <clears throat> now I normally each month at the beginning of each month I send out uh, and invite all of the people on patreon so they know that the discord is there and then they have the choice to decide whether they want to join so I've just dropped that anybody can join there's the discord I am there usually working on stuff uh, that's that sort of that's the whole point of the thing is like I that's where I work and uh, and that's where I get people to give me feedback on what I'm doing um, agile monk keep it up thank you agile monk right so agile monk um, you did a five dollar um, um, super chat I was looking for a twenty dollar super chat so we're gonna make the monster that I've decided to select the monster that I have decided to select for today you may have guessed or may not have guessed and it's the one of many that I will do um, I was watching the Ghostbusters last night the original movie not the new ones or anything like the original movie and one of the monsters in there took my fancy as it always tends to there's a there's a monster in there that takes my fancy that I really enjoy and so um, we're going to utilize that monster you're probably not completely sure what I'm talking about, but for those of you who are aware, um, it's it's actually it's no, I'm not going to show you that just yet. Actually, what we're going to do is maybe I should just do this. This is what I'm talking about, Agile Monk. Well, do you want do do you want the Stay Path? marshmallow man or would you like us to build your your monster um um agile monk <laughs> so so i am all prepped and ready to build the stay puff marshmallow man there you go fred have it um appreciate you, all you do cool blimey agile you've been you've been giving us a, a lot of money um, this is <laughs> this is this is your opportunity do you want me to make your monster um, monk or do you want me to make the stay puff marshmallow man go for it let's make the stay puff marshmallow man as a actual monster for our game um, what do you got here Soltron um, and yeah the um, the classroom format is great I, I really tried to get into the get and um, try to get into my son's um, after school after school club yep 
So it's right. Yeah, good. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm. <laughs> this is. This will be hilarious. Um, I've already. I've already sort of pre-planned my in my head what was going to be going on with this. So we have our monster concept. It's a giant. Should I say a huge marshmallow man, and his name is Stay Puffed. Okay, he's going to have some special abilities. So from the movie, I'm pretty sure we can establish that he has Siege Monster. He's going to be able to stomp. He's going to be able to grab things. He's going to be able to slam things. He's going to be able to bite something and swallow it. Oh my gosh, do I want to do that so much. And he's definitely going to be vulnerable to fire because when you eat marshmallows, you need to ensure that you cook them over the fire. Am I right or am I right? That's right, the Traveller has come. <laughs> um, don't forget, if you hit it, you get um, um, stuck into its um, sticky marshmallow and have uh, to fight to get out. Oh, okay, so engulf. You actually want me to add engulf to it. Interesting. Well, we better go to the workstation, because this isn't the workstation, is it? This is just me showing you what uh, madness I had in mind. So we will um, shift over to our new screen. Here we go. We can see what's going on here. I'm going to move over to where we are going to work. We are going to start with some of the basics that we need to fill in. And um, since I don't want to forget some of the stuff, we better just make sure that I write down what the monster's special abilities are. So we're going to have to write down Siege Monster. Uh... <laughs> Uh, if, if, if you survive, the town gets a feast. Exactly. Um, Siege monster. Uh, sorry, engulf. Um, we need to make sure we have the stomp. Stomp. The slap and grab. I think we can actually combine slap and grab. Um, and I'll explain because of the new grapple rules that are being play tested right now. I think they're a very good idea and actually I've always thought it would be much more sensible to do it that way. So we're gonna do that and we just stop, grab. Uh, what else did we, we miss along here? I was trying to, I'm actually, I was looking at, what was I looking at before? Did I miss anything? Let's just have a look to see if I missed anything. We will return to my screen We'll whip back over here. I got Siege Monster, Stomp, Grab, Slam. Oh, Bite and Swallow and Vulnerable to Fire. Yeah, we need to make sure we get those. Bite and Swallow and Vulnerable to Fire. Uh, okay. All right. Bite and Swallow. Uh, that's that's the that one. And then Invulnerable. Vulnerable to Fire. Okay, so we've got our special abilities. We need to make sure we've got the name. So it is Stay Puffed uh, Marshmallow Man. We've got the name. Um, <laughs> oh, did uh, did you did you really think that I wasn't going to do something crazy here? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Monk's got a really good sense of humor if you haven't figured it out. Okay. So, what is the concept? A giant human, sorry, human, humanoid um, confectionery. Can I spell that? Um, Confect, con. I can't even remember how to spell confectionery. Oh my gosh. Uh, really struggling here with my brain. Confection, con, con, oh that's C O N confection, fiction. Oh, come on, confectionery monster. Okay, oh, can't spell. Thank God that that's working. Uh, what does it look like? It looks like a giant Marshmallow Man. Um, with a sailor hat. Ha! 
hat and um, he I'm sure that he has something around his neck he's got like a it's like a bib isn't it okay with a <laughs> blue bib like a baby <laughs> bib and um, red it's a red uh, ribbon hanging from it um, yeah I think we um, hanging handling hanging hanging from it okay so we've we've got now I have I zoomed that in enough I feel like that okay let's just highlight some of the stuff as we go so that I know we have done this bit for those of you who are like oh what is Fred doing today <laughs> napalm uh, what, what do you got here Robert if several parts um, uh, if you sever parts off they are also sticky and flammable they're not going to sever anything this thing is so huge there's no way they're going to be able to sever nothing <laughs> like napalm <laughs> Wizards of the Coast needs to add this to that um, that giant book they're uh, releasing I don't think that legally they can it's not even like even if I put this up on D and D Beyond, and as a, a homebrew monster, it's not something that you know. <laughs> uh, we're just doing it because it's fun. Like making monsters should be fun, and this makes me laugh. And why not? Uh, yeah. But I get where you're going from. I'm com coming from here. Uh, uh, <laughs> I, I understand. So, uh, so what was this thing created by um, a giant wizard? cookbook no it was created by goes of the gozerian so this is reproduction is we're talking about so we're that's a question for reproduction mate let's not uh, let's not defy the law of the stay puff marshmallow man and um, hence we anger the gods um or the one god um goza the gozerian right let's not mess with goza the gozerian because that seems like a really bad idea so let's go down to reproduction so, um, Stay Puff, Puffed, was created by, um, Goza, I think that's Goza, uh, um, Goza the Demigod, I think it is a Demigod, right? I think it is a God or Goddess? Goddess, God. Yes. Let's go with Goddess, shall we? <laughs> Nevertheless, laughing my ass off. That is the way. Um, yeah, it's a sailor's outfit. Yes. Well, we'll look, I will put it in sailor's outfit. So yeah. So we now know how this thing was created. There's only one. Right. That's it. So appearance. Where's uh? sailor's outfit so i tried putting this through my brother's um, software uh, that uses artificial intelligence to create an image of it and the machine had no idea what to do with it <laughs> i can assure you it has no idea what this is these are one of those times where you kind of need an artist to do the work for you serpents embrace and ooze um, I'm no, I'm, I'm feeling like this is, I feel like this is more of a construct. So if we're talking in terms of like what sort of type of creature it is and so forth, I think what we need to think in terms of it's more of a construct. Now where would that fall under? Um, what does the monster want? Um, what, what does the monster want from the characters? Um, so... So let's make this a, let's stick it in the place that it's going to work. Um, I'm just going to put under unique. It's a construct. Um, okay. Bubble wrap. Yeah, it is Soul Train. You're right. It's like wearing bubble wrap for sure. <laughs> to share and um, comment. And yeah, absolutely. Please, by all means, do so. Like, it's really helpful when people actually do that. It's like 
Share and like is great, um, but also comments is also part and parcel of this. So yes, yeah, don't get it wrong. Gozer, was it? Goza? I think I put goz, Goza, didn't I? Not Gozer. So we'll put an er in there. Um, Gozer, there we go. We've got Goza, the demigoddess. Okay. Okay, so let us, uh, now before I forget, we actually had... Um, now we haven't actually completed that. There was a, something we can fill in here that I realized as I was going through here. Um, what does the monster want? Okay, let's deal with that question, shall we? Stay puffed. Wants to have uh, a good time. Have a, have a good time. Um in the city uh, and get laid and get laid um, did I get it right laid isn't laid an egg <laughs> I, I, mean, I could spell it however I like and it still be funny um, for those of you who are wondering would I actually type this in yes I have just done that okay have a sense of humor people <laughs> It goes with the with the um, with the, the concept where we're drawing it from. Okay, so Dave Puffed wants to have a good time in the city and get laid. Um, yeah, destroy the city absolutely. Um, get drunk. Um, oh, get drunk and eat lots of people. of people or beings beings people beings oh, I'll just put people it's fine it's all good so I think we have nailed down what does the monster want okay so and then um, what does the monster want from the characters right so <laughs> um, wants um, so stay puffed wants their flesh to feast on. <laughs> oh dear. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Now I am. I'm definitely taking the piss. Um, I. I am really just. <laughs> Uh, if somebody can think of something more elegant um, in terms of a motivation, in terms of the characters, but I, I, I think um, Goza was trying to get rid of the characters, right? So we, we, this is what we want. We just want to eat them. He also wants to find giant chocolate bars and massive Graham crackers to make monst to make monsters moors, monsters moors. I am lost, but I'll still put it in. <laughs> <laughs> um, find giant oh gosh this is this is getting silly um giant um chocolate bars uh, <laughs> and <laughs> graham crackers <laughs> um, I don't know what that is. S'mores. I don't know what that is. Monk, I'm, I'm not American. I, I, um, it's, a, it's a reference. It's probably American. I don't understand. You know the favourite um, camping trick? No, I don't. No, I don't. we don't have that in New Zealand. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I when you say Graham's crackers, um, I'm like, is there a, a cracker called Graham's in New Zealand? I don't know. I just wrote down Graham's crackers. <laughs> I have no idea. Or maybe um, maybe turn him into um, small. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm kind of tempted to add, and what he wants is. Uh, no, no, I won't write that. It's tempting, but I won't. I'll leave it alone. It's it's me being like super silly. So, um, what makes the monster unique? Um, it's summoned. 
by a demigod. Okay, uh, what else to make this thing Google it? Yeah, I would have to Google it. I'm not going to Google it right now. Do you think I'm missing out? It's a cracker. I can't even eat crackers. Like, so what am I, how can I miss out on something I can't eat? Okay, it's summoned by a demigod. Um, it's a giant um, uh, world destroying, because it's essentially a world destroyer. World destroying um, monster. Uh, that uh, bring <laughs> brings the uh, yeah that little dude uh, 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 strong monster. We've got the basics there. Okay, what else is there about it? So it's giant. It's summoned. Um, <laughs> he, he's soft. It smells. You want me to write down it smells? I, Robert, I, you're losing me completely. I know you're trying. Hello, Jamie. It smells. Hmm. Okay. I thought marshmallows smelt good, but then I don't have a very good sense of smell. Do 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 marshmallows smell bad? Is that what somebody's saying? Is that what you're saying there, Jamie? Is like marshmallows smell really bad? Um. He smells of what? Bo. Is that what we're trying to say? I don't know what he smells of. He smells of... I don't know what he smells of. Yeah, mate. What does he smell of? <laughs> I, I have no idea. You're going to have to be a bit more specific. What does marshmallow smell like? I, I have no idea because I've never been able to smell it. If you can't figure it out, my, my sinuses aren't very good. Okay. So, uh, where does the monster live? In the... Uh, in, Gozer's, um, well, Gozer's sick <laughs> imagination, <laughs> slash um, Demi Plane, along with everything else, um, smells of vanilla, okay, that's actually helpful, then now I, so I can actually put that down here. Smells of vanilla. Awesome. Tracks of difficult terrain. <laughs> he probably would. Um, he leaves tracks of difficult terrain. Okay, we'll put that under unique. Right, we need to go back. I want to get to where he lives. Um, because it is a construct, so it doesn't really have a place that it lives as such. Let's make sure we are covering all the questions as we go. We kind of have jumped around a little bit, but that's sort of going to happen when you're doing this sort of thing. Um, then we need to, why is the, the monster in its current location for the adventure? Okay, so um, Stay Puff. Stay Puffed is in the city because he has been summoned by the um, demigod goza and a foolish <laughs> character Okay, so um, now a lot of you have got plenty of reference. This is why I'm using Stay Puft because most of you will probably have watched the movie, know the, know the creature, and therefore you've got a lot of sort of existing knowledge and information. It's easy to fill out. If we were doing a monster that you had no idea what it was and we were dealing with just a concept or a picture, it would be much harder. Um, but I think we're doing all right. So we know why it's in the current location. Okay, and it, okay, and it's been um, summoned to destroy world. world. Okay, so did I? Oops. 
Let's do that. Let's go back. Summon to destroy the world. Um, got that. All right, so we we're we're actually out of number sequence here. So let's just change this because somehow I've, I've managed to go completely batty with it, and we need to adjust this to there and there. Okay, so that's better. So we're not going. It doesn't look like we've got a gazillion questions to answer. There is a point we need to stop doing this and get the the mathematics done. Okay, so um, if I go on for too long, we will just stop and move on to the next step, and then we can come back to this and play with this if we want to. All right. So what is the thing unique? Um, smells of vanilla. Um, uh, swallows uh, victims. <laughs> And what else can we do with this? We can um, destroy his buildings. Mm, yep. Okay, so we've kind of filled an. Oops, well, that's not going to work. Uh, uh, destroy buildings. Okay, so let's uh, let's say that we've. I think that's what makes it really relatively unique. Um, vulnerable to fire, immune to force, immune to force. Okay, so what makes um unique? We're next. Act, we're actually looking at its special abilities. So let's go back to that. Um, special abilities, immune to force. Now, why is it immune to force damage? That's a question to be answered. Um, so, Dino, you've given me the um, given me the information. What's what's going through your head when you're thinking about that? Um, when I was a scout, we used to um, set fire to marshmallows and flip the burning uh, marshmallows at each other. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, <laughs> I, was, I, I kind of get that. Um, it will slowly suffocate the world via its massive marshmallow fart, um, fatness. <laughs> I was, I, I was, for a second there, I was like, are we adding in farting to this thing? And I don't know that that's such a great idea. Um, you are like, big kid, you are late to the party. We are creating the marshmallow, man. <clears throat> so far, we've done pretty well. We're actually um, on track for what we need. It's like a watery substance. I uh, get what you're saying. So it's it would be like, it's like if you would punch somebody who's, which you wouldn't do but if you were to punch something like water you're not really getting anywhere right so force against it's not going to work that actually kind of suggests that um it's going to have some other kind of maybe some resistances or immunities to other types of damage um doesn't it not just force damage really what we're talking about is like i mean can you really do very much if you bludgeon this thing I think we're actually saying it's immune to force sorry people bludgeoning I don't think bludgeoning damage is going to be much good to you yeah I think bludgeoning is going to be kind of the same um, right so we have answered that question answered that question we need to keep moving though what makes the monster scary if, if it is meant to be scary <laughs> it can eat you. Eat you. And it's huge. Um, I think that's the biggest issue. What, what makes it terrifying is that it can eat you and it's huge. Like, that's, that's good enough. What does it feed on? Anything. I don't think um, Stay Puffed is actually concerned about um, what um, Stay Puffed eats. Like, it, uh, it's a construct. It will just consume anything and break it down. How does it survive? Um, well, it, it doesn't really need... I mean, it probably doesn't even need Stay Does Stay Puffed actually need to eat? It can, but does it need to eat? That's your question. Like, <laughs> it's like when Shakespeare said... <laughs> I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Stop. I'll stop. Um, it's completely ridiculous. Fear, charm, aura. Ah. Um, well, a fear aura. Do we really want to add in a fear aura? We'll think about that. I'll put that under special abilities. 
Um, abilities. A fear. Aura. <laughs> I'm going to put question mark. My general feeling is that if you can see it, you're in its aura. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I think that's the problem. Um, it, it, we, let's try not to make this thing too um, devastating. Um, how does it survive? Mm, I don't think we necessarily need to answer that question. What is the monster's territorial range? Um, wherever it wants to go. And... Um, And where um, Goza tells Stay Puffed to go. All right. Technically, it's a ghost summoned. Um, I suppose you could say it's technically a ghost summoned, but um, I'm going to go with it's a construct. So um, I will add in ghost if you like. But I, f I feel like this thing is very solid. Like it's it's not... It's not incorporeal. <laughs> it's not actually a incorporeal ghost. It is a summoned thing. Um, so that's where my head is going with this. Uh, it's a summoned construct. Yeah. If it's summoned and then survives by completing its um, purpose, what happens? Right. Yeah, does it discontinue? Does it just vanish? That's actually a very good question. Um... I'm going to leave that for you guys to answer. I'm going to leave that unanswered. What does the monster ignore? <laughs> um, okay, so... Anything it can't see or eat. <laughs> How's that? How does it communicate? How would a giant marshmallow um, man communicate? It's like a... How did I manage to uh, um, ask questions like this? It's because I decided to do a Marshmallow Man and a live stream. No, it goes after, <laughs> not whatever summoned it. It's not going to go after Goza. It's going to go after whoever Goza has said destroy, right? Um, it ignores um, healthy food. Ah, yes. Oh, brilliant. Dino gets triple A on that one. Um, ignores healthy food. Oh, I'm so sorry that you guys have got to go through this. Uh, oh, and we're going to put maths to this very shortly too. Now, how does he communicate is our next pretty huge question. Um, how does it sense he sees them? I think we're going to keep um, his senses pretty communicates. Oh, and snippets of um, commercial Stay Puff advertising. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no. Um uh, uh, what? Um he communicates in jingles. <laughs> with um uh, can be attached with broccoli. How does broccoli come into this? <laughs> um with um short oh jeez, here we go. With short <laughs> jingle like um, sounds. Hi, how's it going, Jay Lauren? <laughs> we're making stay puffed, and things are getting a little bit out of hand, but um, we'll hopefully get it back on track. Uh, I'm trying. Um, uh, with short jingle like sounds, I think that's that's the best way. Like. I mean, I don't even feel like he'd actually be able to communicate in actual words uh, with short jingle-like sounds. Uh, no language. 
I mean, really, is there such a thing as stay puffed marshmallow men language? No language. Probably not. Like a kinder speaks in mimicry. Oh, he can mimic. I like that idea. Like, yeah, it's like a little baby. Mimic. Mimic. Mimicry. Okay, we'll put mimicry in there. Um... Whew, okay. Healthy weapons is a, uh, a weapon. I don't, Robert, I don't, how, how, how has healthy foods been a weapon? Like, you're going to throw a broccoli at him. Is this where we were going? Is this what the broccoli thing was all about? Oh, seriously, it's not what I'm come here for. So, so Jay Lauren, we're actually going to make a stat block for the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man. So if you came here to see me do the maths, we are. And I probably should start very shortly. But we are having a bit of fun since <laughs> it's pretty funny to be making it. And um, we couldn't we couldn't help ourselves. Um, he <laughs> I can't help myself. Earth. <laughs> Um, load single blitz with um, Brussels sprouts. No, we're not putting Brussels sprouts. Okay, so we're, we're going to have to get away from that bit. How does the monster sense? Okay, um, sight and sound. I don't know that he has any ears, does he? I don't think he would be able to smell. I mean, does Stay Puffed actually look like he's got, he's got, has he got any nostrils? I don't think he's got any nostrils. Can't smell. Okay, no sense of smell, no sense of smell. Um, the problem is not finding broccoli. You have to cross the streams to this stuff. Okay, <laughs> go with it and say carrots. I, I like more. <laughs> okay. All right, so, um, uh, okay, so let's, let's, <laughs> Let's just highlight that. I think we've got our senses sorted out. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Stay Puff does not have nostrils. Okay, so now I need to get the Dungeon Master Guide. Open it to the page that I had suggested that you open it to in the first place. So that we can actually do this. Um, this is going to be interesting. Uh, <laughs> and we're going to move over to a different screen. For those of you who are like, what is Fred up to? Well, here we go. Plunge right in. And we will follow the instructions that uh, I had given you before. So this is D&D Beyond. This is where we're going to build our monster from the information that we have. And hopefully, I don't know necessarily that we'll get there, but hopefully we get it all done. Like, um... <laughs> We do it as quick as we can, right? So go to collections, then go to um, uh, so create monster. There it is, right here. And then we wait for it to load up. It might take forever. It will eventually come. We got it. Okay, so you got two options. It, the, you can use an existing monster, and you can go from scratch built. And we are going to build it from scratch because that's what I said we were doing here today. So that's what we're going to do. All right, scratch built. So we need to have the monster name. So it is Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man. Did I get it right? Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man. Yes, we do. This is version one. Uh, monster type is a construct. We got that established because it's summoned. Uh, it doesn't have a necessarily a, no, I don't think that sort of works for us. Let's get rid of that. Uh, size, we're going as big as we can go. I really feel like it should be colossal, but it's, we're not going to be able to use colossal. So we're going to go with giant. It's not a swarm creature. Alignment, I don't really think, I think it's unaligned. Um, you know, if, if Stay Puft has a good time, he might, uh, <laughs> He might ditch Gozer and go with something else. Like, we're going to start off with a really high... So looking at the chart on page 274 of the Dungeon Master Guide for Dungeons & Dragons 5e, that chart there, right, gives you all of the numbers that we're going to use. But before we do any of that sort of thing, okay, 
what I want to say to you right now, and this is where this is where it kind of it gets a little bit important, and that is, um, it's probably very very sensible to start at the high end because we're trying to make a world destroying monster, right? We can it will get toned down when we make adjustments because it's not like everything's going to be maxed out. So my suggestion with Stay Puffed is start with thirty. All right, just because of the nature, you 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 might you might be aiming in the range for your 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 group a particular number, but you'll often find as as you build your monster, they it tends to come down and down and down rather than go up and up and up. That's what I tend to find is that my monster's challenge rating will drop over time. So that's what I would suggest. And then we're going to pump in the different values that we require for this thing off our um, line that says thirty CR rating. So. I'll, um, proficiency bonus is going to be quite high. It is a nine, and we will deal with all of those other things very shortly. But we're going to skip past all of that, and then uh, down here, um, don't worry about armor class yet. Where is our proficiency bonus supposed to go? It's down here somewhere. I cannot see it. Why can I not see it? Saving throw proficiencies. Um, uh, no, that's not what I want. That's not what I want. Okay. All right, so we'll, I think what we'll do is we'll create the monster and then we should be able to come back and it should open up all of the other options. Um, I do think we need to make this a legendary creature, so I'm going to tick legendary, okay? Uh, for those of you who are like, oh, why would we make it legendary? Because it's probably the smartest way to go. All right, so let's do that. And we will create the monster. Um, yeah, no, that's exactly right. You get them laid and uh, you, you're, all, you're all good. Okay, so... So that has, should hopefully have given us the beginnings of what we need. So let's pump in our numbers. Um, now, come on, where is it? Is there not a section here? I'm sure there's supposed to be a section that says this. And for the life of me, I can't. You will be able to provide more relevant details uh, once the monster is created. Right, so that's interesting. Field required. Oh, okay, so let's put in an armor class for it right now. I don't feel like he's very dexterous. Um, do I really want to do that? I, I just want to put some numbers in here. Since these are the fields we have to fill, I'm just going to put 10 for now. No, I'll just put 12 for now. Um, Pass perception, I'm just going to put 10 for now. And I'm just going to go 10 or right across everything because I actually don't want to work with this. I want to actually do what I'm trying to do, which is actually work with that. Um, uh, paste. Um, we'll just do this. Um, a D12 hit point dice. Yeah, look, we can do that. It's, it's, a, it's a large creature. And then um, average. Uh, average field. Max. It's... Is that, that's not even, that's nowhere near where we need to be. Okay, but we'll put that there for now. And this is 10. Come back to these. I'm going to change all these numbers later. I just want to actually get into the other stuff. Right. Did I get it? Right. So it wouldn't let me create it before. Have I clicked all the little things that I have? Okay, so let's do this. Right. Let's have a look and see if we have what we were after. Okay. The average should actually be more like 303. Come on, you silly thing. So one of the problems with this thing is, so on the chart you'll see it says 300 and, um, is it 303? So that's damage output. That's not the damage hit points. Oh, it's 806. Good Lord, here we go. All right, so let's go back into the information now that we finally got the thing to make it. Yeah, legendary actions. We're going to have to do some. Sorry, people. <laughs> Um, okay, so let's go back into here and we can fill out our um, yeah, average hit points. 
It says 806 to 850. I'm going to suggest we go 850. Um, it's probably a look. I know 850 hit points sounds like a lot, but you know a lot of the characters nowadays they can bucket out a lot of damage. It's like it's it's not a big deal. Um, I've made monsters that had had 850 900 hit points, but you can always tone that down. Like that's that's what that table there it gives you an idea. In that column that says hit points. Right now we should be able to go in here. Sorry and fill in some of our details. So armor class for that challenge rating is actually supposed to be 19. So we'll put 19, but we don't want a 19 because that's like too much. Um, can I find the proficiency bonus section? Or they just not have, they haven't updated this thing to include the new way that they, they build monsters anymore. Uh, saving throw, proficiencies. Because um, there's usually supposed to be a section that says proficiency bonus. And that allows you to, to, to sort of establish everything else from there. And for the life of me, I cannot see it. Why can't I? <clears throat> okay, anyway, we'll, we'll add some languages. No, we're not adding languages. Got no language. Forget about that. Senses. It does have senses. Um, I don't feel like Tim, he would have um, dark vision. So um, do we really want to give him some skills? What would Stay Puffed have as a skill? Like, that's that's a good question. Uh, movement. We need to deal with movement. Like, the speed. Um, he can only walk. Walking speed. There's no flying going on here. <clears throat> We're going to give him a... Is it 50 or 60? He's pretty big. Let's go with 60 feet. You're not going to be outrunning him. Notes. Do I want any notes? Um, <laughs> I'm tempted to write something like, if he if he falls over, he can't get back up. But no, I won't do that. We'll just put 60 feet. All right, so skills. Um, what would he be skilled in? He's a sailor. Mm, survival? He is a construct. We don't necessarily have to give him any skills, um, but I'm, I'm going to give him um, survival for um, for that. <laughs> um, base value. <clears throat> um, additional bonuses. Well, monsters base skill bonus. Typically, this is the ability score. Yeah, so we need to actually deal with that later. So we'll come back to that. So we'll just go save. Right, and uh, senses, I don't think there's anything that would be appropriate in terms of his senses. I think everything would be too specialised. Blind, no, don't want to give him any of that. Um, so we might actually just skip that, cancel. And languages, we're going to skip, and we will go into the other stuff that we need to do. Right, <clears throat> so there is a, a little bit of maths that we have to do in terms of building him, uh, so that he actually works out. Uh, average damage we're trying to do is 303 to 320. Uh, that's per round. No, that sounds like a lot. Okay, it is. It's an immense amount. But we'll put that down as 320. I think on the top end, because like Wizards of the Coast has not made any adjustments to anything they do nowadays, so it's sort of like it's a bit awkward. Um, hit points, um, do I counter? Enter the number of hit die your monster has. Uh, no, it needs to have... I believe it's 30. It's something like 30. <laughs> really, big kid? Sure. Uh, that's the hit point counter. Passive perception. I don't want to give him a particularly good passive perception. I don't think we would try to make him like super on his stats. If anything, um, it's it's <laughs> it's it's more of a gag. Let's get real. Right, we did actually have a discussion about sort of the damage immunities he might have, so we can actually drop those in in a second. Um, the save DC. Now, where are we? Saving throw proficiencies. Um, well, it's a good. I think we can probably give. Stay puffed a constitution 
um, saving throw. And uh, is there anything else? No dexterity, no charisma, no intelligence. Um, a strength one. It depends on how strong we're making making this this um, this mother. I think constitution is a good idea, so let's leave that. Um, damage adjustments. No, we're not going to be doing that. Uh, but condition immunities. Ooh, that's a good. So we'll go with the damage immunities because we did actually discuss um, immunities to what was it? Force. Let's try and find force. Force immunity. Bludgeoning. Bludgeoning immunity. Um, I'm not sure that we necessarily need to give him resistances to anything. Uh, I think those two immunities is going to change things quite a lot as it is. Um, his armor class is supposed to be a, a 19. So here's what normally happens when you take something like this, right? To give you an idea in terms of the numbers. Um, if I want to be tw it to be 12, and the chart says 19 should be the armor class for a monster like this, for every tw two points I take off armor class, the challenge rating goes down. So if I go from 19 to 17, then I take off one challenge rating. If I go down from... Um, um, 17 to 15 then I take off another challenge rating okay if I go from um, 15 to 13 another challenge rating and then if I go down by another 1 to 12 I don't take one off so there's going to be 3 challenge ratings that drop if this goes down to 12 and that's what I'm going to suggest we do although I'm tempted to make it 11 let's make it 11 and we'll take off 4 instead okay so instead of it being 9 whoops Instead of it being 19, we go down to 17, 15, 13, 11. So four challenge ratings drop. Okay. I should be vulnerable to fire. Yes, don't let's not forget that. Yep. So let's just change the challenge rating up the top here. So you can kind of see how I do that as we go. We're taking four off because of what we did. We were going to check our challenge rating at the end anyway. All right, we need to add in the vulnerabilities, uh, which is, it should be under this thing here. You're vulnerable to fire, where are you? Fire, vulnerable to fire. Uh, conditions, um, well, I, I don't think, you, 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 you can't frighten a Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man, let's get real. I don't, is lightning really going to do very much to a Stay Puft Marshmallow Man? We could do that. We could do that if you liked. We'll make him vulnerable to lightning as well. How's that? Um, lightning. Where is it? There we go. Vulnerable to lightning as well. I suppose because of the burning effect. Yeah. Um, exhausted. Pfft, no. It'd be funny if he got exhausted. Uh, incapacitated. Invisible. Um, no, that's not what we're going to do. Paralyzed, petrified. No, that's be can't really poison a, a construct. So let's get rid of the um, the poison condition, and then um, unconscious, stunned, restrained, prone, petrified, paralyzed, invisible, exhausted. Okay, so that's all good. Environment. Okay, so it doesn't actually have a specific environment. Um, we can put urban if we like, but actually, it, you know. We'll put urban if you like. Uh, Jay Lauren, what's this? Um, from the scene, the guns uh, look like uh, lightning. Sure. <laughs> the guns, yeah, I, there you go. You're right. Good point. You, you're staying with the um, <laughs> with the lore of the monster. Good for you. If you cross the streams. Yep, so we've got lightning vulnerable to that. So fire and lightning. Okay, so now we need to start looking at some of the other aspects of it. Um, DC saving throw is supposed to be 23. I am not going to mess with that too much because actually I'll find that if you mess with the attack roll, because if the attack rolls are 14 and the DC for the saving throw is 23, if you mess with those too much, you kind of make a, a mess of things. Yep. So we're not going to mess with that at all. We're going to leave them alone. What we will need to do is we need to go through here and figure out all of these 
um, stats for our monster. Um, hit point modifier. We won't worry about that. It doesn't really matter because we've got our, our average um, hit points um, is in the wrong number. It should be a lot higher than that. It should be 800 and 50. 850. Should be more like it. Right, okay. Um, strength, I would say he's pretty strong. So I would say he's in the top end. So let's make him uh, a 20. Mm, I wouldn't say he's super, super strong because he's like, he's a marshmallow, isn't he? That's not muscle. Let's give him a, a 25, 24, 25. Um, I can't remember what the modifier for that is, but I will have to figure it out. Somebody will look up what a 25 is in terms of the modifier. And then our decks, let's keep our decks very, very low. I think it's better to leave it at 10. So our armor class can be a 1, and he can have natural armor. Um, natural. It's more magical, really. Uh, natural, uh, classified as that. Um, con, we need to max out con to a, to a fair amount. I would say let's go... Uh, pretty high, let's go with 28. Intelligence, not that bright. Let's go with, um, I mean, let's go with an 8. Yeah, not that learned. In fact, we could even go lower than that, because when you think in terms of a, um, of a monster who's a construct, when we look at the monster manual and you look at the constructs that are in this, uh, which is golems, gee. I'm pretty sure most of them sit in the three or four range. Three, three, six for a flesh golem. Clay golem is a three. So let's make him um, not that smart. Like that's that, that would be kind of like a, a good way to go. So let's make him a three here. Intelligent score. Uh, wisdom, we'll fill in that as well. Um, I don't want to make him like um, a, a dumb snot, uh, but I don't want to make him super smart either. So let's give him just an 11. And his charisma. I don't know. What do you think in terms of charisma? Do you think that it should be high or should it be low? Damage below 5 HP generates very um, next turn. Uh, Monk's Nightmare. Yeah. I don't think car regeneration on a monster with that many hit points is such a great idea. I actually think you wind up just causing yourself more um, trouble. Um, so I would not add regeneration on a monster like this. Not when you're dealing with 850 hit points and you're dealing with a challenge rating that started at like 30. Um, uh, anyway, so uh, let's let's so forget about that as a as a concept for now. I would say. Um, we we're trying to make him easy to hit, so he's not going to be hard to hit. They're going to hit him most of the time with an armor class of 11. And he's massive, so I mean, how would you not hit him? And he's soft and squishy, like, you know. Charisma, we'll just leave that at, um, I feel like he's got quite a bit of charisma. I'm going to give him a 12. Like, you know, who wouldn't want to go out with Stay Puff? <laughs> okay, monster tags. Um, well, let's have a look. Construct, we'll put that there. We'll save that again and have some water. Now, if we get to the last 10 minutes, you need to make sure that I stop and go and do the recalculation for CR rating so you can see this done. Okay? So if we get to one, um, if, if we, in the next 20 minutes, I need to go and make sure I've done that bit. Right, well, we need to put some monster um, bit, bits and pieces into this thing because right now we've got nothing. We're not going to worry about the, um, the, the description because we've already done a lot of that work already and we could cut and paste, paste but I'm not going to bother. Um, I don't want to do anything too too outrageously difficult. So let's start off with dealing with um, our, our different things that we can do. What were we supposed to be putting in here? I believe there's a number of different features that needed to be included. Um, mm, 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 let me go back and have a quick peaky at where I was, sorry, um, where's my little notes, under abilities, siege monster, okay, so we need to add in siege monster, and then um, siege monster is over 
here on this page. Let's flip a few pages. Siege Monster, page 281. Siege. Siege Monster. Okay. <clears throat> yep. Right, so we'll put in there. Where is it? Um, special traits. Siege Monster. Is that? Copy. Drop it down. Pardon me. Siege. Siege monster. Um, and now some of the monster builders actually have things you can just pick the pre-made sort of stuff. Um, this is you have to write, you have to type everything in, which can be a bit of a bugger. Um, so I'm going to put just does double uh, damage, damage, damage two structures and buildings it's essentially what it is and we don't want that in capital so we will get rid of this and where is the unbold unbold it full stop so we've got siege monster um we also want i think we're going to make it a trait and a trait rather than a an actual uh what do you call it uh an ability like in golf I think is probably going to be better if we just go like we'll just cut and paste this copy and paste and we'll put in golf now I'm pretty sure we should have already in golf as an option under where is it false appearance and large and da -da, in golf da -da 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 -da. or do I need to make it up that would be a, that would be an, uh, a hassle, but we might have to. In golf. In golf. We'll put the in golf there, and did I just put a T there? I did. Okay, so we've got in golf, um, which we will need to actually fill out. Which we will. Uh, where is it? In golf. Which is the gelatinous cube. G, 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 gelatinous. Yeah. Be under oozes. O for ooze. Ooze, baby, ooze. Ooze, baby, ooze, ooze. Finding me some oozing. Right. That's not it. That's a P. Orc, the ooze. Here we go. Um, ooze cube trait transparent engulf. Okay, so it doesn't list engulf as an, a little of the, the power. And it does so as subject to the cubes engulf. All right, it's got ooze cube. Do I have ooze cube? Because pff, ooze cube is, uh, is quite a long winded piece because it's an yeah so we'll put um, we're going to have to do something with it. I'm going to put mark this down and I was going to put down here for now ooze ooze cube um, and I will mark that as uh, 200 page pages uh, page page 242 of the monster manual for now as a note we'll come back to that otherwise we're going to get lost don't want to get stuck on this we want to move move forwards all right so i got that one i need to make sure i get the next ones okay we've got some attacks we need to add in uh siege monster and golf stomp slam grab bite to vulnerable to fire we've got that um or we'll add in vol fire and lightning um 
and bludgeoning. Um, we've got those. Uh, fear aura was a question mark. Okay, so we need to start making some attacks. So we will we will build them now. Uh, name of action into the description of your action. Are people still there? It's got very quiet while I'm doing this. Okay, so let's do it. We've got a number of melee attacks we need to deal with. We've got no ranged attacks that I can think of. So we can take all of the ranged attacks out. Um, we'll take them out. Do I want to do that actually? Now that I think about it? Because we could throw a, a section of building if we really wanted. Um, yeah. Throw building pieces. <laughs> oh dear, this reminds me of the sort of stuff I used to do when we were um, doing Dungeons and Dragons uh, 4 e for those of you who are like, ah, still here, good, all right, so I'm going to drop in the different melee attacks, I'll come back to the ranged attack, and let's just get all of the basics in here, um, oh, I almost need to make sure I don't forget the legendary action. You're probably wondering what I had done here. So enter the description as for how legendary actions work for your, your monster. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. And you're probably all going to freak out when I do this, but I'm putting it in. Okay. The, um, okay. The marsh. Mellow man can take a legendary action at the end of every player's turn. That's right, people. I'm quite serious. Okay. None of this three or three points or nonsense like that. It's just at the end. At every player's turn, there's going to be a legendary action. So what can they do? Like, forget about the cost. Okay? Ditch that. What is the action? Um, and we will just add in here. We're just going to go straight legendary action. Yep, and then we're going to list the legendary actions that we can take. That's it. This is what I normally do, people. It, it, I know it seems a little odd because this is not your standard, what you would normally do if you had a, uh, a Wizards of the Coast monster. They wouldn't do it this way. Legendary action. Right. Uh, so I'm going to copy this. I'm going to put this down here. We're going to have two categories that you can select from. That means it gives you lots more, a lot more um, options. So first off, basic, legendary action, standard. You get to choose from any of these. So basic legendary action, you can dash, you can dodge, you cannot hide, because you. Stay puff, Marshmallow Man, not going to be able to hide. So forget that. Uh, what other basic actions do we have in combat that we could we need to add in? I often do this, people, um, is just go through and look at all the standard monster um, combat attacks and, like, what can I include that it could do that is fairly basic in nature? It's not special or anything like that. Um... Do I want to allow it to disengage or dodge or something like that? Use the help action? No, that's none of those. So dash, dodge, and um, might even add in use an object because that would be kind of fun. Use an object. This gives you a few more options to actually do something with your monster that actually kind of makes sense at the end of everybody's turn. Okay. All right, so 
I'm not going to put disengage because I just don't feel like it's it's something that I, I want to um, encourage. Um, we, he's not going to run, okay? And reading an action, no, nah, none of that. None of the search nonsense, get rid of all that. Okay, next thing. We've got a whole lot of different attacks. So our standard legendary actions, all of the actions that we're going to take part in, which were, I believe, stomp, slap, grab, um, what else was there? Bite, um, not the swallow. So we don't want the swallow to be included, but we want to be able to use everything else. All those standard actions at the end. Okay, and oh, actually throw a building section, is actually probably throw building pieces. <laughs> yes, we want that there as well. You can rip off a building piece and hurl it. Uh, did I miss the slam? I did too, did I? Grab. No, I've got slam there. Slam is in there. Okay, so all of these, I'm going to turn that into non-bold. These are all options. There's none of this points going on. You just, those are the things you can do. You pick from either the basic legendary actions or the standard um, legendary actions. Now we need to actually include all of these actions into our combat section. Uh, and I need to be fairly quick because I think I'm actually starting to run myself out of time. 20 minutes, is that enough? Might be. Okay, let's go there. Let's drop this down. Okay. Um, okay, thanks. Hi, Corey. How's it going? Slam. Okay. Yep, we got it. We're all good. So we need. We actually got a few we got to put in here. So we'll do, do, do this a few times. Paste. Okay. Right, so I think we've got most of those there. So this is where we're going to have to start adding in some attacks for this creature. And um, I'm actually going to add in multi-attack as well. So uh, up the top here where it says um, action name, we're putting in multi-attack. Multi-attack. Uh, that's that. And so we want to add in um, the, the marsh mellow man uh, makes. Now I'm I'm thinking, given that we were pu we were pumping out so much damage per round, like the kind of damage output that we're looking for a monster like this, remember is um, 330 to 320. So we're going to divide it into into three, like so. That's going to make it three attacks. Um, that means that every time it does something, that's doing about a hundred points. Now I know that sounds terrible, but trust me, you're probably putting this up against level twenty characters, right? So th they can actually survive. I can assure you that a fighter will have two hundred and fifty hit points, and a wizard is probably still going to survive this thing. I've tried to kill them; it's not that easy. Um, so we're going to make three attacks. Three. Um, sorry, three, uh, slam, stomp, um, slam, stomp, what else was there we were working with? We are working with some other things. Um, throw, building pieces. Uh, I don't remember if we have done all of this. Um, da, da, da. We all want to include grab because he's got two arms, so he can get to two of them. Grab. Okay. Right, multi attack. All right, so let's start putting it in some of this stuff, which is going to be kind of interesting because. <laughs> uh, Let's put in our first one, which is going to be our stomp. Probably use that the most. Stomp. Uh, next one is slap or grab. Because we can do both. Or slam and grab. Slam. 
or grab. I'm going to combine it. It'll be the same thing. Um, instead of a, grap um, a grapple being like a contest, we're going to utilize the new concept, which is an attack roll, which just makes life so much easier for everybody. Okay. Um, so bite. And then the swallow section will have to be the other half of that. Uh, then what else was there? Bite. Did I miss anything? I think I've got them all. Multi attack. Da 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 da. I think that's. I think that's all of them. Okay. All right. So uh, there's some numbers that need to be plugged in here, right? So we actually had a chart that told us what our attack modifier should be. So our attack bonus is a 14. Don't worry about what the proficiency bonus is. Don't worry about things like how much strength it is or anything like that. Just use the attack as it is. So we're going to plug in really fast 14 into that area right now because that's what it should be, 14. Uh, attack plus 14. 14. Remember, you only need to build as much as um, is necessary, not... Uh, not the Eiffel Tower. Now what did I do? Did I just delete the plus? I did. Plus 14. Okay. 14 on that one to hit. Did I actually have the space there? Let's try to get the space in. Uh, the bite is a 14. Lightning lure, no, I don't know. I don't think lightning lure. I think, I think the idea of adding a fear aura is a very good idea. So under monster traits, absolutely, let's 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 put a fear aura in, um, and a and a and a saving throw. I, I I'm I'm all for that. So let's go. So we were thinking about doing that. So we'll go copy. Right. So you get about the spells. Stay Puff does not cast spells. That can go. Um, special trait is going to be Fear Aura. Okay, and then we will pump in um, our numbers for that. But first I want to just finish off what I was doing. So, um, okay. Fear Aura. Uh, so we were doing 14s, weren't we? Down this way. <clears throat> 14, 14, slam, da da da, multi, 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 da, 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 bite. Attack action. I've got slam, one, stomp, slam, and grab. Bite, that we don't need. Here, this one here. I'm tempted to change this only because his dex is so low. Like, there'd be no other reason why I would consider it, um, just because so he doesn't wind up hitting things quite as often as normal. Now, his normal proficiency bonus is actually a nine, okay? So this is the one time I'm going to do something with it, um, is I'm going to take the, oh no, here we go. Um, and we're going to uh, report don't want that. Stitch this. I do, do not uh, really appreciate. Um, YouTube has got to get the act together with this. Um, yeah. Anybody in chat, you are welcome to go and just report it. Uh, you might have to do it a couple of times. That should generally get rid of it. Um, I'm doing it now myself. And report unwanted content. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. So uh, reach. We want to give it a pretty good reach. Um, I'm going to get because it's so large. I'm going to give it 15 feet. Oops. Did I do 15 feet? 15 feet. Um, so melee, deck, da da da, da feet, the 
bite, that's a slam. The bite is going to be less. I don't think the bite should be quite as far. So I'm going to just make that, it's going to be pretty close. So make that at five feet. Um, attack action is not what we're after here. Um, the stomp, the stomp is going to be pretty good. So let's go with uh, 15 feet as well. The amount of damage, so we take our damage, we're supposed to be doing two round, um, two, um, every round, which is still sitting at the challenge rating 30, even though we adjusted it down. We take the 300, okay, and we're going to go 303 or 320. I'm just going to go, let's just aim for 300, it's just easy. And so our target, um, now where's it, da, 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 hit, 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 to hit, um, I believe... Okay, so, hashtag one target. We don't want to have multiple targets going on here, so one. One. Uh, so what is this? Would you have a swallow follow up, um, followed, um, following up the bites? Yes, or grab. I think the swallow for the bite, um, or the grab, um, the bite the, or the grab, but I think the bite is probably the one we want to go with, okay? Um, but it's up to you. Any of those would be perfectly fine. So one target at a time. Target spite slam. Yep. Um, one target to hit. Uh, did I have that right? Ah, oh, we need to put in the range for this. I almost forgot that. So, sorry, I was talking about the range of the, how we do the hit modifier for throwing a piece of building. So, the proficiency is is 9, okay? So, we'll take the 9 and we add the dex modifier, which is 0. And it's, so, it's going to be much harder for Stay Puff to actually hit anything. We're going to give it a 9, so it's a 0, okay? For those of you who are like, ooh, what's the deal with that? His, uh, his um, attack should have a 10 foot area. No, because I'm going with um, um, uh, Gargantuan. I'd like to go Colossal, but there's no such thing. So, no, we won't do that. In terms of um, the range that he can hurl things, I think what we will do is we won't say that he's super good at throwing stuff. So we go 60 feet to 240 feet. I'm actually using the Storm Giant as a sort of a guide here. And then um, we can only hit one target. And then the amount of damage that he can do by throwing something. I'm not going to worry about the brackets thing. Forget about that. We're just going to go 100. So every attack that he does, you really want to be doing about 100 points of damage. Yep. Um, okay, so now with the bite, one target hit damage, 100. What I normally do is I roll a, 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 um, I'll have a hundred and then I'll add a six-sided dice to whatever that is, and that just changes the numbers. You know, um, your average is usually three, so you wind up with about a hundred and three, or it could have one hundred and one or one hundred and six. It gives you a bit of vari vari um, variation, particularly if you feel like um, it's just too too obvious. Um, but that's my personal preference in terms of how I do do damage is like just to roll a six sided dice for all my monsters and just add it to the average uh, okay so we've got that 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 that, that. damage type stomp um, right so okay so what we're going to do is I have put in the basics very very much the basics you can see it's going to take me a lot longer to finish this off okay we do have the legendary actions we've kind of got the basics worked out we've got our attacks in. we've got our attack modifier we've got our damage we know what it's going to do we know what its range is we've got multi-attack we've got some special features we've got them in there we've got all of our other numbers but we actually need to figure out what the deal is in terms of our cr rating based on what we're doing here like um my suggestion to you is, is look at the purple worm in terms of the swallow feature uh when with our bite all of this, you can probably cut and paste the swallow feature directly into here. And I would pull up that page if I had time, but I'm going to run out of time. Yeah, being able to throw people would be good too. Absolutely. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go over here, and there is a website that allows you to actually pull up and check that your numbers are right, like you have actually done this correctly. 
and it's on um, 5e tools and so here's the website I'm going to just copy this I'm going to open up a new page all right that should bring it up I have used I have used it before now one of the things you'll find is things like um, vulnerabilities and um, vulnerabilities special abilities uh, immunities it's very hard to, to build that in and actually have that work effectively for you okay so first off follow your instructions enter the expected CR of your creature so we'll do that if I can close this CR rating 30 that's what we started with right hit points uh, defensive we've got 850 because that's what our, our chart says our armor class is quite low because we've only got 11 yep our size is gargantuan our hit dice is the d20 okay a number of um hit dice uh we actually listed that as 30. okay uh constitution now uh, can i remember what the constitution was of this silly thing let's go down I, I i know i gave it a pretty high number uh 28 was the constitution score so we go into here constitution 28 so while I'm pumping this in, it is calculating, figuring out. So how much damage do I expect it to do every round? About 300, roughly. Um, and if we count the fact that we're actually doing things like, um, forget about the legendary actions. Don't worry about the amount of damage you're doing per round by the legendary actions. That's unimportant, okay? Because you remember, it's a solo monster fight. So if we're doing rolling a six-sided dice, that would change you would have to add in a little bit more you you take that number that we just put three um 300 and add another nine so another three for every average basically um, for every th the three dice that you're going to roll okay our tech modifier we are using the attack modifier the uh, chart re recommends which is a 14 so we'll put in a 14 um using saves uh yes we'll put in saves um uh, vulnerabilities yes we have vulnerabilities we have uh, immunities, so we have immunities. Um, files can be dealing damage to zero only. Da, da, da. What's that? Flies? No, it doesn't fly. Saving proficiencies. Uh, so our saving proficiency is going to be about a 23, I believe it is. What's the saving proficiencies? I think we have one. We have zero to one, so that's fine. So we've got one saving proficiency. Um, any features off the monster stat block we can use that we actually already have con um, considered using, we can go through and tick off anything that we might have utilized. Um, so we can tick fearful, we'll, we'll include the fearful presence since it's actually have, this is actually in many cases a little bit better uh, than the uh, the monster builder with regard to, our, to figuring out if stuff is going to work or not. Um, we're not going to pick pack tactics. Uh, it doesn't have everything here by the way, it only has a few things. These are the things that sort of count the most as far as the calculator is concerned. Okay, so now that we've done that, it should be giving us an idea over here. Challenge rating is now 23. It's listing the offensive challenge rating as 30. It's listing the defensive challenge rating as 16. Its expected proficiency bonus is considered to be a 7. But don't worry about that. This is not important. This other thing. It gives you an idea of how much experience points. So about 50,000 experience points awarded for to defeating this. Okay. So we, we have a fair idea. It's giving you an idea. Okay. So this means the overall challenge rating is actually a 23 based on that calculator. Because of the numbers we've pumped in. It looks at this and says, okay, um, this is what we're dealing with. Right. So based on that. We take the 23 and we go into here and we update, hopefully, unless of course it won't. And we can update our challenge rating based on the numbers that we've put together for our monster. So it's no longer a 26 because of all the other things, it's actually a 23 based on the vulnerabilities and the immunities that have been included. 
And I know I haven't had time to build out absolutely everything, but all of the basics that you really needed to have there are there, okay? And um, I will try to finish this up at some point and uh, and get it onto Patreon. But that is that's the basics in terms of doing it. Like you just go through, start with that chart, expand it out, fill in the gaps. You do a quick calculation for your CR rating, and then you use that calculator to do the rest. And you're pretty much done. Like it's... Um, it's as easy as that <laughs> sort of <laughs> sort of okay all right so for those of you who are hoping that you would get most of it i mean you could e i could easily sit here and work through and do the entire thing and it would take me hours um but you can see we we spend about an hour on the stat block filling in the details i'm a bit slow um, I'm sure you can do it faster. If you have more than one, what you what you want probably want to do is you want to open up um, two tabs for D and D Beyond and just cut and paste some of this, um, the monsters' um, abilities directly into what you're working on, just to make it easier for you. Okay, that would be my suggestion to you: is just drop it in that way, and that'll make it significantly easier to actually put it all together for yourself. Okay, right. I think we have nailed down what we needed to. I am going to have to go to work. I will be back. We're doing locations. You guys wanted to talk about towns. I will talk about towns. Like that's that's the intention is I will talk about towns in the next one that, that I do, which is like tomorrow. <laughs> oh my. Um, I'm a crazy person. I know. <laughs> anyway. Thank you to my patrons. Thank you to everybody who's been watching and following my live streams. I do appreciate it. Thank you for watching my videos. I hope this was useful to you in some way and that you have at least the beginning building blocks to get your own monsters together and um, fleshing them out and making them into something, not just a an idea, but an actual stat block as well. Um, thank you, Corey. I appreciate it. And everybody else. And thank you very much for the super chat, Tom Adriel Monk, again. So wherever you are in the world, whether it be the morning, the afternoon, or the night, please look after yourself, your family, and your friends. Be nice to your neighbors. Okay, and hey, till next time, keep rolling those 20s.